Hi friends, what can make a person who doesn't have much knowledge in modern computer technology if he got computers in dead and half dead state? The first option is recycling. They break the equipment, bite off everything shiny, and hand it over to the recycling. Or the precious metals are extracted on their own. The second case is an amateur electronics engineer. The boards are looked at under a microscope for a long time. The names of the components are recorded. And then, find the documentation on the internet in order to understand what kind of component it is and where it can be applied. Often these are all sorts of complex microcircuits and it isn't so easy to find a secondary application for them. The third type is creative people. By cutting off the piece of the board or pulling out the component and pouring it with jewelry resin, you can get a worthy piece of jewelry that will be a good gift. The laptops that fell into my hands are different, mostly ancient devices. One is even too old, alas, it is not working, but I still dig into it. A miracle can happen and it will work. It makes no sense to talk about specific brands of these laptops. I removed everything unnecessary in advance, leaving only the most useful. I could show all sorts of relatively useless designs, like how to run all the church lamps from the backlight of these laptops or, for example, how to make a cutting laser from a DVD drive. But there are a lot of such videos, so I think there isn't much point in this. Well, so clean for fun! Once I did a video about what can be made from the components of a video card and said that also I could show contact welding. but. There are a lot of such videos on the channel. Then there were many comments on this subject that it was still necessary to show such a construction. Well, now here is the apparatus for spot or resistance welding from laptop components. Any laptop has a bunch of different DC-DC converters that form the power supply of the processor cores, video chip, memory, etc. As a rule, these are complex multi-phase converters made according to synchronous topology, providing low supply voltages but monstrously high currents. The composition of such converters includes powerful MOSFETs and despite their tiny size, they are capable of a lot. Here, on this board, it can be called relatively modern. I found as many as 10 similar transistors marked 4955. A Google search made it clear that these are powerful low-voltage MOSFET transistors with a drain-to-source voltage of 30 volts, a drain current of 48 amps, but best of all, the open-channel resistance or RDS ohm is only 5.6 milliohm. Of the secondary but important parameters is a short-term pulse drain current, which is 210 amps, but adjusted for the fact that there is a 100 ampere limit for this housing. In total, we have 10 transistors, and in theory, our switch on MOSFETs can switch for a short time 1000 amperes. Of course, there are many nuances here, for example, time. It is clear that such tiny transistors a current of kiloampere will not tolerate for a long time. Even one second is enough for them to evaporate, therefore, we will work with smaller time intervals. I also demounted one ohm transistors and other trifles that can be used in our device, although other components had to be found in other trash. Here is a circuit of the device. It consists of a 555 timer control system and power switch on MOSFETs. Of course, you can take other cooler transistors, but we use what was found on the laptop board. When you press the button, the 555 timer generates only one pulse of certain duration. This duration, and hence the welding time, can be adjusted by rotating the variable resistor. The duration of the control pulse is always stable and doesn't depend on how long and how many times you press the button. You can even hold it, but nevertheless, the timer will generate a single pulse of the set duration. This pulse will light up the LED of the octocoupler. The transistor of the octocoupler will open and give a plus to the gates of the power MOSFETs. 
They will open and the welding current from the power battery will go to the welding point. After the set time has elapsed, the impulse will disappear and the power switches will close. Someone will say that the circuit should have a normal driver to control the power switches. Yes, I agree. But almost all Chinese similar welding devices are arranged in this way and work well. And I have already done similar welding with a more normal control system. In this circuit, the transistors will close on account of pull-up resistors and it is desirable to put a separate pull-up and gate resistor for each transistor. In the circuit, you can see a separate DC-DC converter on the MT3608 chip. This source provides stable power for the control system. When welding, there will be a voltage drop on the battery. If this voltage is below a certain level, then the control system will not work correctly. The transistors may not fully open. In general, there will be problems. Therefore, this source has been added, which increases the voltage from the battery to a level of 14 to 15 volts. The board and manufacturing process. Well, there is nothing special to say here. I made the board on a laser engraver. It's quite compact and can be said it is double-sided, although one side is just large polygon where the ground from the battery is connected. The drains of the transistors are the output. The wire from them goes to one of the electrodes. The other electrode comes from the plus of battery. Separately, a low power plus goes to our switchboard. This plus is needed for the control system of work. You need to understand that huge shock currents will flow during the welding. So it is advisable to use the copper flexible stranded wires for 10 to 12 squares. I don't have those, so just use that was at hand. The electrodes are single core copper wires with pointed ends, 3 mm in diameter, so that at the welding the ends of the electrodes don't stick to the tape. It is advisable to round them slightly. The holders are made of tinned copper sleeves, crimped with hydraulic press and insulated with adhesive-backed heat shrink, although conventional ones can be used. The buttons must be attached to one of the holders for comfortable operation. Now about the welding time. It is regulated by a variable resistor ranging from 2 to 30 to 35 milliseconds. Why exactly this time? I have a good board of the same industrial welder, which has approximately the same limits. I simply took this as a reference, then assembled the circuit model in the simulator and by selecting timing components achieved these limits. But here everything is individual. If the maximum limit for your task is not enough, then you can increase it, carefully and wisely, based on the documentation for your transistors. About the battery, it is clear that the battery here is needed not an ordinary one, but a high current one. For these cases are excellent suitable modular polymer batteries 2S, 3S with a capacity of 2 to 6 amps and a current output of 30 to 70 Celsius. In general, you can try from one cell of a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery. Here anyway, the control system is designed so that a voltage of 15 volts will be applied to the gate of the MOSFETs and this is more than enough to completely unlock them. How does this thing work in practice? In general, it calmly welds tapes 0.10 to 0.12 mm. The points are very neat, but copper electrodes often stick. Tape 0.1 mm uproot with meat even with duration of 15 to 20 milliseconds. I could, for example, increase the welding time and try 0.15 tapes, but I didn't dare. Besides, 0.12 tapes are enough for many tasks. The device came out worthy and most importantly, from at hand trash. Here, the most expensive are MOSFETs, but even those can be easily obtained from the boards of old laptops, video cards, and computers. When welding, be extremely careful. The currents here are huge, and this can happen, but I got off lightly. Before the end of the video, let me remind you that all the necessary links, including the project archive with a circuit and a printed circuit board, are in the description of the video. That's all today and I say goodbye until we meet again. As always, with you was Kassian TV.